Hello, I'm Anthony. I've been having a, a play with my project course. I'm going to walk you uh, through my current project course. That's up today. This is the first time in a couple of years I've actually uh, revisited my course being for two days. And that's very surprising to me because the predominantly dark skin that I've been using for the past couple of years has kind of annoyed me for that entire time. It's just one of those things I never actually got around to fixing. Today, I'm going to give you a quick whistle stop tour um, of this color setup. I'm not going to go into every color configuration option in today's video. I've already covered a large part of the substantial uh, information for exchange, and I'll put a link to that uh, above in the description below. Today, I'm just going to talk about this particular color scheme. And if you want to, a very quick headline based guide on how to set up your project for us, uh, this is going to help you, I hope. We're going to head into edit preferences, and this color custom scheme at the top of the interface is the one that's most important for you to get right. And this basically governs all of your colors throughout the entire application. It's way too important, and it's worth saying actually a couple of years into this particular um, user interface editor, I think it. It's so clunky and difficult to configure that we're really wading through mud to make this thing work properly. That's hopefully what I'm going to help you with today to make that pain a little bit less. Just a quick note before we head on, this Anthony Blue scheme that you're looking at now is available to my patrons and channel members. There's links and buttons below if you want to check that out. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to head into this custom color picker. And regardless of the shade of color that you choose, obviously I've gone for blue here. The most important decision that you really need to make, I think, is how you want your buttons and drop down boxes to appear in the application. Because that single choice, or those couple of choices, are going to actually filter through a large part of all of the other decisions that you make. How much white text on the colored background do you want, as opposed to black text on colored background? And the color scheme that I have here is just sufficiently dark to make all my buttons turn white. If I make this scheme just a little bit lighter, now my buttons turn black, and I really don't like that. In fact, with the backlit lights I have now, I can hardly read those buttons. That's horrible. So I've just very carefully chosen the point at which this color scheme flips to white. And that's it, but basically I'm locked in. Regardless of what shade you're going to choose, find that point on your color picker scheme where your buttons turn from black to white. There is a, uh, another shade much, much lower down, and we're heading into a really dark territory where your drop down boxes will also have white text. But the point at which that flips is almost black. There's no color scheme that you can choose uh, when you don't have an extremely dark interface if you want your drop down boxes to be white. If I make this a little bit lighter, And they've all got blocked again. And I've still got a pretty dark interface. My goodness, that's horrible. Let's get back. Let's get back to my eyes in the blue. Apply. Because I like quite dark interfaces, but not deeply oppressive. This is the perfect combination for me. Now then, this color picker is also going to um, predetermine another value that's going to populate throughout many of your other choices. If I click into any of these options, let's choose Project Barrier Grid Lines, see the vertical lines in the upper window. Click into that. Can you see that the hue of our view is grayed out? And that's actually the case for most of your editor options. So let's choose another one randomly. There again, the hue is grayed out. That hue has been set by me choosing my custom color screen right up at the top. Why it's grayed out for most, but not all controls, I've got no idea. Uh, focus color, for instance, isn't grayed out. It's just totally random, just an, an awful interface. Just because this value is grayed out, however, doesn't mean you can't manipulate it. If you want to, you just have to do it through the RGB values. So if I change any one of these values, now you can see my hue has changed. So I can't edit it directly, but I can edit it indirectly, utterly inexplicable. So having chosen my custom, custom color scheme, which is determining white buttons, um, and unfortunately black drop downs, I'd like them to be white as well, but I can't have them, so I'm going to move on. The next most important thing for me to decide is my project area background and my editor background. These are two very large pieces of real estate, and I want them to tie in 
my overall theme, but they are selected independently. Now, the reason why they grayed out this view value is to try to lock you into blue, but of course, if I showed you earlier, you can independently override that. What I'm really trying to do is to get really light shades aren't too, aren't too dark or oppressive. I find that any of these areas, if there's really big areas of green real estate, if they're too dark, it's just overwhelming. They don't, don't like that much colour. So I've chosen very light colours that have quite a lot of subtle but significant impact. So I've still got a very small shade of blue in my actual project colour. If I go all the way up to white, that's again a bit too garish. Not a big fan of that. I keep having to reapply these preferences every time I change them so we can get back to the one that I actually have. So that's decision number two. Project area background and editor area background. The third most important decision to make are your rulers. The primary determinant for these colours, apart from the fact that they have to contrast, I want my background and my cycle colours to be read really clearly, obviously distinct. But if I come out of cycle mode, I also want that to be very distinct as well. So as you can see, my non cycle mode is actually the lightest of the three shades. Then I've got background, art, somewhere in between, and then my actual cycle mode. It's the darkest of the three colours. But have a look at the text colour as well. So it's black on the lightest of the shades, but the other two shades are white text. Once again, I've just worked all of this out empirically. Having determined my ruler colours, I now want my cycle regions, again, very big chunks of colour, so these are important to get right. The contrast with everything else on the screen. So let's have a quick look at the project area background and we'll have a look at all of this. Um, in detail. Here are my rule of values down at the bottom. Here's my inactive cycle, stuff in between the locators. Active cycle is the dark colour, and rule of background is the stuff at the top. That's common for both interfaces, but the cycle regions are individually configured. So my cycle region in the project um, window is this pretty grey shade of blue. I don't want really vivid colours because it just puts light after a while and makes it difficult to actually see anything behind. Having put my cycle region, we have another thing that's kind of that flows as a consequence from making that choice. I want to make sure that my grid lines always work. So that when I'm in or out of the cycle region, I want to be able to see the grid lines nice and clearly. Again, I'm continuing with the blue theme. Here are my grid lines. Let's choose something much more vivid. There they are. So they kind of disappeared on the background there. Uh, that colour combination simply doesn't work. So all of this is spending, I don't know, maybe spent an hour to an hour and a half choosing all of these different colours. As I cycle in on my grid lines, you can see that they're just good enough, they're just clear enough for me to be able to see. Don't want them to be overwhelming, I don't want it to be a massive checkerboard of lines. So everything stayed quite subtle, but it does work. One consequence of this particular colour scheme, which I'm on the fence about whether or not to change, is that it's made my bookmark markers more difficult to see. The bookmark markers actually have lines that track. Let's put it out of grid mode. Put it in the middle of one of these. There's actually a line that's the same colour as the bookmark marker itself. If I was to make that bookmark marker, Bright red is going to change to two tracks here because I don't need it. Horrible interface. Uh, if you don't want to edit both uh, project editors simultaneously, and they happen to be selected, you have to click in one and then click in another, and that individually narrows it down to a single track. You can see this, this line is now red, so that makes the markers really pop. Of course, marker number five has a thing that faces because more reasons. So that's it's kind of nice to see from the bookmark markers, they're really clear and, and highly visible. I'm not sure I want them to be that um, heavily identifiable, so good luck getting all of that back to the colour I actually want it to be. So for the time being, I'm leaving them as this shade of blue, which is the, the shade that I have for the bookmark tracks. I think they fit quite nicely in the project, and they're not offensive to my eyes at all. They're very, very gentle little blue lines in the project window, which really aren't very noticeable and completely disappear if they're on a grid line. I can live with it, I don't really care. It's 
So that's it for my latest course game. Hope that makes some sense to you. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit like if you did. I'll see you again. Thanks very much.